Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to lecture number six of the course on statistics and probability. Students, you will recall that in the last lecture and in the lecture before, you have dealt with a very important concept and that of the frequency distribution of a continuous variable. In today's lecture, I will begin with a diagram which is known as the stem and leaf plot. This plot was introduced by the famous statistician John Tukey in 1977. What was the motivation of this particular diagram? Is cheese ki motivation yeti ke jabab ek frequency distribution form karte hai to jo individual observations hai unki jo identity hai wo baki nahi rehti yani aapke samne nahi rehti the identity of the individual observations is lost iske baraks stem and leaf display ek aisa diagram hai which offers a quick and novel way of simultaneously sorting and displaying a data set and it is such a diagram in which each item in the data set is divided into two parts a stem and a leaf. A stem is the leading digit of any number and the rest of the number is called the trailing digit and that forms the leaf and a vertical line separates the stem from the leaf. My opinion is that we try to understand this by an example. Consider the number 243. There are three digits in it. You can break it in two ways. If you treat two as a leading digit, then four and three 43 that would form the trailing digits or if you treat 24 ko leading digits ke taur pe treat kare, to 3 jo hai, that would form the leaf. How will we construct a stem and leaf display for, a, for an entire data set and not just for one number? Let us consider the following example. Suppose that we have the ages of 30 patients admitted to a certain hospital during a certain week and suppose that the ages are as you now see on the screen. If we were to represent this data in the form of a stem and leaf display, obviously what we should do is to take the first digit of every one of these numbers in the stem part and the second in the leaf part. If we do that, we obtain the stem and leaf diagram that you now see. The very first stem consists of the digit 1 and the leaves corresponding to that stem are 8 and 2. This is why in our data set mein, there was one patient whose age was 18 and another one whose age was only 12. Similarly, you can have all the stems and the corresponding leaves. Ye jo aapne abhi abhi dekha, of course, this is very much a stem and leaf display. Lekin isme humne in sari values ko iske andar is tara se enter kiya, usi tara se enter kiya, jis tara se humare, jis order mein humare paas wo data tha. Lekin generally, hum chahate hain ke hum us data ko pehle ascending order mein arrange kar dein and then we represent it in the form of a stem and leaf plot. If we do that for this particular data set, our array will be as you now see. Our values in ascending order are 12, 18, 26, 27, 29 and so on. Ab hum is arranged data ko agar stem and leaf display mein convert kare, bilkul usi tarah jaise abhi kiya tha. So, our stem and leaf display kuch is kisam ka hoga. So, as you can see, the stem and leaf display is a quite a useful way of representing data. Isme aapki jo observations hai, 
their identity is not lost. Every single um, observation is in front of you and yet it has been presented in a compact and presentable and beautiful form. Of course, this can also be converted into a frequency table. And in this particular data set, as you can see now on the screen, the frequency of the class 10 to 19 is 2, the frequency of the class 20 to 29 is 3, and the frequency of the class 30 to 39 is 5. Ye किस तरह से अखस किया? देखिए, पहली जो stem थी, वो थी one, और उसकी जो उसके corresponding जो leaves हैं, वो हैं two and eight. इसका मतलब यही है कि वो जो दो patients हैं, उनकी उम्रें 12 और 18 साल हैं. इन दोनों उम्रों के लिए आप ये note कर रहे हैं कि ये values 10 to 19 के दरमियान fall करती हैं. क्योंकि 10 to 19 ऐसे नंबर हैं इस तमाम कि जिनका जो पहला डिजिट होगा that has to be one तो ये 12 और ये 18 जाहिर है कि उसी क्लास में फॉल करेंगे कि जिनका पहला डिजिट होगा one similarly हमारी जो दूसरी स्टेम है that is two और उसके अगेंस्ट जो लीव्स हैं they are six seven and nine Again, this means that in teen patients' ki umre jo hai, they are 26, 27 and 29. Zahir hai ke ye teen umre aisi hai ke jinka jo fall karti hai usi class mein which is 20 to 29. So, this way students, it is actually quite simple to interpret the stem and leaf display and also to convert it into a frequency distribution. In this manner, for this particular example, we have the frequency distribution that you now see on the screen. Our class limits are 10 to 19, 20 to 29, and so on. And the class boundaries, as we did in the previous examples of the previous lectures, by taking the average of 19 and 20, we get 19.5. The average of 29 and 30 gives us 29.5 and so on. Or iske baad, of course, when we count the number of observations that fall in all these classes, our frequencies come out to be 2, 3, 5, 6, 6, 6 and 2. Converting this frequency distribution into a histogram, we obtain what you now see. And I think you will all agree, following what I said in the le last lecture and the lecture before, that this histogram is approximately symmetric or better said, slightly negatively skewed. If I rotate this histogram by 90 degrees, I will obtain what you now see on the screen. But students, what did our stem and leaf display look like? Did it no, not look something like what you now see? So you see, the stem and leaf display looks exactly like the histogram. And this is the point, ke aapne apne data set ko summarize bhi kar diya, organize bhi kar diya, और उसकी शकल भी बिल्कुल उसी तरह की है जिस तरह आपके हिस्टोग्राम की या आपकी फ्रीक्वेंसी डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन की है लेकिन एडवांटेज ये हुआ कि आपको जबकि उसमें इंडिविजुअल ऑब्जर्वेशंस की आइडेंटिटी आप लूज कर गए थे इसके अंदर यू हैव ऑल द ऑब्जर्वेशंस इन फ्रंट ऑफ यू यू लेट अस कंसीडर अनदर एग्जांपल एंड स्टूडेंट्स प्लीज नोट that whereas in the previous example, we had a data set containing data values which were two digit numbers. This particular example will explain the situation where some of the data values are 
three digit numbers. All right, the example reads listed in the following table is the number of 30 second radio advertising spots purchased by each of the 45 members of one particular automobile dealers association in one particular country. As you can see, the number of advertising spots purchased are 96, 93, 88, 117 and so on. We would like to organize this data into a stem and leaf display. Also, we would like to obtain answers to the following questions. Number one, around what values do the number of advertising spots tend to cluster? Number two, what is the smallest number of spots purchased by a dealer? And number three, the largest number purchased? Now, in order to solve this question, students, the first step is to note that the smallest value in this particular data set is 88 and so we will make the first stem value as 8. Also since the largest number of spots purchased is 156 therefore we will have the stem values going up to 15. Hence as you now see on the screen the stem consists of the numbers 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 and 15. And for this purpose we will consider every data value one by one and we will start filling out our stem and leaf plot. So the first number in our data set is 96 which means that the stem value of this number is 9 and the leaf value is 6. Similarly the second value in the data set is 93 so the stem value is 9 and the leaf value is 3. Also the third value in our data set is 88 so the stem value is 8 and the leaf value is also 8. In this manner after having entered the first three data values in our stem and leaf plot we obtain what you now see on the screen. Organizing all the data values we obtain as you now see on the slide for the first stem value 8 the leaf values are 8 and 9. For the second stem value 9, we have the leaf values 6, 3, 5, 6, 4, 4 and 7. And similarly, we have the entire display. Now, the usual procedure is to sort the leaf values from the smallest to the largest. And if we do that, the final table appears as you now see on the screen. As you can see, this looks very nice because not only all the stem values are in ascending order, but also in every row, all the leaf values are in ascending order. Now, we can draw many conclusions from this stem and leaf plot. First, the smallest number of spots purchased is 88 and the largest is 156. Also, we note that two dealers purchased less than 90 spots and three purchased 150 or more. Also, we note that the concentration of the number of spots is between 110 and 130. There were nine dealers who purchased 
between 110 and 119 radius advertising spots, 8 dealers who purchased between 120 and 129 spots. So, as I said, the concentration is in this area. And students, as far as the shape of the distribution is concerned, it is obvious from the stem and leaf display that the distribution is approximately symmetric. Let us now consider another example. Suppose we have the data regarding the mean annual death rates for a certain population for the age groups 20 to 65, as you now see on the screen. These death rates are per thousand, and the figures are 7.5, 8.2, 7.2, and so on. If I use the decimal part in each number as the leaf, and the rest of the digits as the stem, I will obtain an ordered stem and leaf display, as you now see on the screen. Students, I leave it to you to verify that the stem and leaf display for this particular data set comes out exactly the way you just saw, and also to study an, a few variations that we have for the stem and leaf display. I will now proceed to the next concept that we have to consider in the area of descriptive statistics, and that is the concept of central tendency, an extremely important concept in the whole theory of statistics, or wo concept jisko urfeyam me averages kaha jata hai. In this context, the very first thing to note and to recall is that any data set that we are going to collect in real life, it is going to be essentially variable data. Yani, wo tamam values wo adado shumar jo hum ekatche karenge, zahir hai ki wo values tamam ki tamam ek barabar nahi hongi, balke vary kar rahi hongi. Isliye, the first thing we have to realize is that we need some measures, some means by which we are able to describe this variable data that is available to us. A concise numerical description is often preferable to a lengthy tabulation. And if this form of description enables us to form a mental image of the data and to interpret its significance, so much the better. Averages enable us to measure the central tendency of variable data and measures of dispersion enable us to measure the variability of the data. Aye, ab hum is concept ko, averages ke concept ko formally define karte hain. An average is a single value which is intended to represent a set of data or a distribution as a whole. It is more or less a central value around which the observations in our data set usually tend to cluster. As a measure of central tendency indicates the location or the general position of the frequency distribution on the x-axis, Therefore, it is also known as a measure of location or a measure of position. Lekin sabse zyada commonly used term to average hi hai and also the other term measure of central tendency. Let me try to explain my point with the help of an example. Suppose that we have the data of the number of houses that have various number of rooms and we have this data for two different suburbs, suburb A and suburb B. Looking at these two frequency distributions, we should ask ourselves what exactly is the distinguishing feature? If we were to draw the frequency polygon of the two distributions, 
we would obtain, as you can now see on the screen, two polygons which are exactly identical to each other except that their location is slightly different. Aapne dekha ke how interesting it is ke polygon ki jo shape hai wo bilkul exactly identical thi dono data sets ke liye lekin jo position hai on the x axis that is different. Ab iski kya wajah hai? Aayye hum in dono distributions ka mean compute karte hain. Arithmetic mean jo ordinary concept jo hume dachpan se hum sab ko malum hai. If I compute the mean number of rooms per house for suburb A, I find that this number comes out to be 6.67. But if I compute the mean number of rooms per house for suburb B, that is equal to 7.67. So there is a difference of 1 in the two averages. Ye jo difference hai between the mean values of the two distributions, this is what has accounted for the difference of the location of the two distributions on the x-axis. Looking at the original data once again, zara isko gaur se dekhye, jo frequencies suburb A ke liye hain, 8, 27, 30 or 16, Bilkul usi tarah ki frequencies suburb B ke liye hain. Lekin fark ye hai ke jab ke suburb A mein 8 is corresponding to the number of rooms equal to 5, 27 is corresponding to the number of rooms equal to 6 and so on. Suburb B ke liye the same frequency distribution is occurring but with a kind of a shift, 8 is now corresponding to number of rooms 6, 27 is corresponding to number of rooms 7 and so on. Yehi jo shift aapko data set mein nazar aai hai na, yehi shift of course aapko uske frequency polygons mein uski position mein nazar aai hai aur yehi shift, yehi jo difference hai, ye reflect hota hai उन दोनों distributions की mean values में तो इस तरह से आपने देखा कि एक single value यानी average एक पूरी distribution को बहुत आसानी से represent कर देती यानी सिर्फ एक average value का हमें पता हो तो हमें पता लग जाता है कि हमारी पूरी distribution x axis के ऊपर किस जगह पर आ, लाए करती है। अब ये तमाम डिस्कशन जो हमने एवरेज के हवाले से की है, स्टूडेंट्स, इसमें दो पॉइंट्स बहुत इम्पोर्टेंट हैं, एंड आई वुड लाइक टू डिस्कस देम विद यू वन बाय वन। पहली बात तो ये है कि ये जो एग्जांपल हमने अभी किया, आपने देखा कि इसमें हमारा जो वेरिएबल था, दैट वाज � number of rooms in a house ki baat ho rahi thi. So, we could have five rooms, six rooms, seven rooms, but obviously we will not have seven and a half rooms. Lekin, aapne note kiya ke suburb A mein average number of rooms per house was 6.67 or suburb B mein average number of rooms per house was 7.67. तो फिर अब सवाल ये पैदा होता है कि इस इस फिगर का क्या मतलब है? How can we have 6.67 or 7.67 rooms per house? Students, actually it is not such a big problem. अगर आप थोड़ा सा गौर करें, तो आप नोट करेंगे कि यकीनन we cannot have 6.67 rooms in one house. Nor can we have 66.7 rooms in 10 houses. But we can have 
667 rooms in 100 houses. So, this is the way to interpret the arithmetic mean in case of a discrete variable. Agar aapka average decimal mein aa jaye, to aapko is, aap usko is tarikhe se interpret karenge. Jaise mein phir repeat karti hoon, is example mein, we are saying that for suburb A, on the average, every 100 houses have 667 rooms, which is equivalent to saying 6.67 rooms per house. Ye to tha pehla point. Aur dusra point ye hai, ke ye jo average value aap compute karte hain, kisi bhi problem mein, to aap us phenomenon ke hawale se bhi to isko interpret kare na, ke us problem mein is average ka kya mafhoom banta hai. So, for this example that we just considered, if we are saying that on the average there are 6.67 rooms per house in suburb A, but 7.67 rooms per house in suburb B, students, kya iska ye matlab nahi banta ke on the average suburb B has larger houses as compared with suburb A to the extent that on the average there is one room more in the houses of suburb B as compared with suburb A. All right, let us now begin our discussion of the various types of averages that we can have. Abhi jo maine aapko example diya to give you the basic concept of averages or the basic concept of central tendency of a data set. Usme maine arithmetic mean ka zikar bar bar kiya kyunke that is the most commonly used average. But of course there are several other types of averages too and they have their own importance and their own significance in various situations. As you can see on the slide, the most common types of averages that we have are the arithmetic mean, the geometric mean, the harmonic mean, the median and the mode. The arithmetic, geometric and harmonic means are those averages which are mathematical in character and which give an indication of the magnitude of the observed values. The median indicates the middle position of the data set, while the mode provides information about the most frequent value in our data set. I will ye averages one by one discuss karungi. And uh, rather than starting with the arithmetic mean, in a more formal manner, I would like to begin this discussion of the various types by talking about the mode. As I just said, the mode is that value which occurs most frequently in a set of data. That is, that value which indicates the most common result. If you consider the example of the marks of eight students in a particular test, which are 2, 7, 9, 5, 8, 9, 10, and 9, obviously the most common mark is 9. In other words, the mode of this particular small data set is 9. But it was a very small example, a very small data set. Tha. अगर हमारे पास काफी substantial data हो, तो फिर हम mode किस तरह से compute करेंगे? Obviously, we need to have certain formulae and certain methods by which we do it. So, let us first of all consider the case when we are dealing with the, the raw data, not a frequency distribution, but the raw data of a continuous variable. इस case में, how do we find the mode? 
It's very simple, just as before, as in the example that I just did, all you have to do is to count the, the number of times each observation occurs and the value which occurs the most number of times, that will be the mode. Let me explain this point with the help of an example. Suppose that the government of a country collected data regarding the percentages of revenues spent on research and development by 49 different companies and obtained the figures that you now see. Now, as you can see, these are only 49 values. लेकिन उसके बावजूद एक दम से नहीं हम बता सकते कि कौन सी वैल्यू सबसे ज्यादा दफा कर, कर रही है तो बिफोर आई एक्चुअली कंप्यूट द मोड आई थिंक इट इज नाइस फॉर मी टू शेयर विद यू एन अदर वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग प्लॉट व्हिच इज कॉल्ड द डॉट प्लॉट डॉट प्लॉट के जरिए एक तो यह है कि खूबसूरती से यह डेटा रिप्रेजेंट होगा और दूसरे यह है कि मोड को uh, determine karne mein hame bohat zyada asani ho jayegi. So, if I want to formally define the dot plot, it is a dot plot is that plot in which the horizontal axis contains a scale for the quantitative variable that we are wanting to represent and the numerical value of each measurement in the data set is located on this horizontal scale by means of a dot. When data values repeat, the dots are placed above one another, forming a pile at that particular numerical location. In this particular example, you have the dot plot as you now see on the screen. And as you can see, the value 6.9 is occurring three times whereas all the other values are occurring either once or twice. Hence, the modal value is 6.9. Aapne dekha ke chunke 6.9 ke upar teen values thi aur wo ek pile thi jo sabse zyada thi compared with any other value. Is liye hume mode ko locate karne mein bohat asani ho gai. Iske ilawa, is dot plot ke aur bhi advantages hain. It gives you quite a good idea of the data set that you are dealing with. For example, in this particular data set that we are considering, the dot plot shows us that a majority of the R&D percentages lie between 7% and 9%. And we can say that almost all of the R&D percentages are falling between 6% and 12%. Ye to hui discussion regarding the mode in case of raw data pertaining to a continuous variable. Or lage hatho, hamne dot plot we discuss kar liye. Students, you will be interested to note that the mode is such a measure that can be computed even in the case of nominal and ordinal levels of measurement. You will recall that the nominal scale is the one where we classify the observations into various categories in such a way that there is no particular order for the grouping. For example, when we talk about the marital status of an adult, we note that it can be classified into one of the following five mutually exclusive categories, single, married, divorced, separated, and widowed. Or, aap agree karenge, ke there is no order in these categories as such. On the other hand, the ordinal scale is the one where a certain order does exist between the groupings. For example, speaking of human height, an adult can be regarded as tall, medium or short. Aap dekh rahe hain ke 
अगर हम इस तरह से एक्सप्रेस करें तो एक ऑर्डर तो हमें नज़र आता है मगर चूँकि इसको हमने क्वान्टिटेटिव टर्म्स में एक्सप्रेस नहीं किया इसलिए वी के नॉट से दैट वी आर डीलिंग विद एन इंटरवल स्केल और अ रेशो स्केल एज आई सेड अर्लियर द वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग थिंग रिगार्डिंग द मोड इज दैट इट कैन बी कंप्यूटेड इवन इन द केस ऑफ नॉमिनल एंड ऑर्डिनल लेवल्स ऑफ मेजरमेंट एज एन एग्जाम्पल ऑफ द डिटर्मिनेशन ऑफ द मोड फॉर नॉमिनल लेवल डेटा consider the following a company has developed five different bath oils and in order to determine consumer preference the company conducts a market survey the following chart shows the results of the market survey students in this attractive diagram you note that the various bath oils 1 2 3 4 and 5 have been taken along the horizontal axis obviously the largest number of respondents favored bath oil number 2 as evidenced by the highest bar and hence we can say that bath oil number 2 is the mode so this is the way in which we can determine the mode in the case of nominal level data let us now consider the case when we are dealing with the frequency distribution not the raw data but the frequency distribution of a discrete variable in case of a discrete frequency distribution identification of the mode is immediate one simply finds that value which has the highest frequency for example suppose we have the data of an airline and we have this information that the airline found the number of passengers that they had in 50 flights of a 40 seater plane ये डेटा जो आपके सामने है इसमें एट अ ग्लास यू कैन सी दैट द हाइस्ट फ्रीक्वेंसी इज 13 एंड हेंस विद इन वन सेकेंड यू कैन टेल दैट द मोड इज 39. द मोड इज 39 पैसेंजर्स इसका क्या मतलब है इसका मतलब है कि सबसे ज़्यादा मर्तबा उन 50 फ्लाइट्स में से सबसे ज्यादा मरतबा ऐसा हुआ कि 39 नाइन पैसेंजर्स ट्रेवल कर रहे हैं एंड इट इज अ फोर्टी सीटर प्लेन सो द कंपनी शुड बी क्वाइट सेटिस्फाइड दैट द फोर्टी सीटर प्लेन साइज इज जस्ट द राइट साइज फॉर दैट पर्टिकुलर रूट दिस वॉज द डिटर्मिनेशन ऑफ द मोड इन केस ऑफ द फ्रीक्वेंसी डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ अ डिस्क्रीट वेरिएबल एंड अफकोर्स the next one is the mode in case of the frequency distribution of a continuous variable in this particular case students our formula is going to be a bit longer than all that we have discussed until now in case of grouped data the first step is to find the modal group the modal class that class which contains the highest frequency the next question is what at what point within the class does the maximum value lie aur iske liye hamare paas ek formula hai jiski derivation to hum is course mein nahi karenge but we will apply the formula to real life examples in case of the frequency distribution of a continuous variable the mode is defined as l plus fm minus f1 over fm minus f1 plus fm minus f2 into h i will define all these terms for you in this formula l will represent 
the lower class boundary of the modal class. Fm represents the frequency of the modal class. F1 represents the frequency of the class preceding the modal class. F2 is the frequency of the class following the modal class and H is the length of the class interval of the modal class. As you just saw, the notation that we have for the mode is x hat. Yani x likkar, hum uske upar ek choti si topi dal dete hain. And that is the notation for the mode. Now let me explain this formula that I have just presented to you with the help of the example that we have been considering for the past two or three lectures regarding the EPA mileage ratings of cars. As you will recall, the mileage ratings were in the classes 30.0 to 32.9, 33.0 to 35.9 and so on. And the number of cars in these classes was 2, 4, 14, 8 and 2. As I said a few minutes ago, the first step is to determine the modal class, yani that class which contains the maximum frequency. As you can see on the screen, the class 36.0 to 38.9 is the one that has the maximum frequency 14 and hence this very class is the modal class. Yehi wo class hai jiske andar mode lie karta hai. Ab agla sawal hai ke mode ki exact value kya hai? Uske liye we'll apply the formula that we have just seen and to apply it we first need to determine F1 and F2. As I told you F1 is the frequency of the class preceding the modal class and so in this case it is 4. F2 is the frequency of the class following the modal class and in this case it is 8. L is the lower boundary of the modal class and hence as you can see in this case it is 35.95 and H is the class interval of the modal class. In this case, the class from 35.95 to 38.95, obviously it's three units long and hence H is equal to 3.0. Substituting all these values in the formula, we obtain the mode as 37.825. Yani, is example mein hum yu samjhe ke jo mileage sab se zyada karon ke liye akar kar rahi hai, that mileage is 37.825 miles per gallon. Let us now perceive the mode with reference to the graphical representation of our data set. Aap ko yaad hoga ke humne EPA mileage ratings ke example ke liye histogram, frequency polygon or frequency curve tino draw kiye the and they were as you now see on the screen. Now if we would like to locate the mode on this diagram, of course it will be located on the x axis because after all it is the most common value of the variable that we are dealing with and the variable that we are dealing with miles per gallon occurs on the x-axis. Hence, as you can see, the mode is almost in the middle of the frequency distribution and it is actually directly below the highest point of the frequency polygon. So, this is the point to be understood. Ke in case of a frequency distribution of a continuous variable, it is extremely easy to locate the mode 
if you draw the frequency curve of your data set aapki curve rise karke fall karti hai aam taur pe aur jo maximum point hai uske directly below jo x value hai that is the mode zahir hai ke this is in line with the definition that i have given you after all what was the mode the most frequent value in your data set or frequency curve kahan pe rise karegi obviously it will rise at the most frequent value students the topic that we have just discussed the mode it is a very important and fundamental concept iski real life applications ko hum inshallah next time discuss karenge and also i will discuss with you the situations when we might have not no mode in our data set or we might have more than one mode that is the bimodal situation iski tafseel mein to hum inshallah next time hi jayenge lekin is waqt jo baat main emphasize karna chahti hu wo ye hai ke isko humne measure of central tendency kaha hai iski wajah ye hai ke jaisa maine abhi kaha the mode is that value of x which is directly below the maximum point of your frequency curve and because in most of the real life data sets the maximum frequency occurs somewhere in the middle of the distribution hence the mode is in the middle somewhat in the middle and hence it can be regarded as a measure of central tendency in the next lecture after discussing the real life application of the mode and discussing some variations of the situation we will proceed to the discussion of the arithmetic mean and the weighted mean in the meantime i wish you the best in your studies of the subject and allah hafiz